to Jesus in this house. Come on, we're the sold out apostolic Pentecostal. Young people, we have made it here to impact you conference to make an impact. Come on, I wonder if we could just give God some praise because we are sold out for the kingdom. We are sold out for his purpose. Is there anybody that has decided that I'm going to give my life to Jesus every waking moment, every waking second? If we look at the times that we are living in right now, we have young people that are giving themselves to every single type of cause. We got people that are giving themselves to financial goals, to educational goals, to social goals. But here we are in a meeting with a ton of young apostolic Pentecostal people. We were made for such a time as this. This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, that in the last day saith God, he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Come on, are we the people that is gonna go to this generation and to this world and give them the answer that we need? We gotta be sold out for him, sold out for his purpose, sold out for Jesus. People are giving themselves to every type of situation. But where are the people that will be sold out for Jesus? People are desperately looking for something to jump on. People, young people all throughout our world that we live in are so hungry and they are so desperate for change and for something real. And here we are, the people that got the change, the people who are the real deal. And what this world needs is not just some fake, phony version of the church. But here we are in the latter days, and we are the church. We are the young people that need to give this world what we got. We see people in every type of cause, jumping on in every type of situation. And the world needs us. The world is in desperate need of not just our grandfathers and our elders, but God is in need of young people that are sold out. Young people that are sold out. Because of everything that we have talked about and everything that God is wanting to do, it will never hit the streets if we don't take it there. We, it will never hit the streets if we don't take it there. And people are looking for change. And when they see you walk into a McDonald's or they see you walk into a Best Buy and you are ready to be sold out, regardless of the cost, regardless of the reason, that is when Jesus can do the work in you. And I believe that the world is tugging on our generation. Just like Pastor Buxton said, we live in certain times. And in this day and in this age, there is a need of apostolic young people that are certain which side they are on. They need, we need to be certain which side we are on. Are we on the Lord's side today? Are we on the Lord's side today? Come on, I will be sold out. I will give up my whole purpose to God and God alone. Every strength that I got, every breath in my body, it's for Jesus. It's for Jesus. It's for Jesus. And I won't give any one of my moment to no social movement. I won't give it to politics. I was not made to be a politician. I was not made to be no professor. I was not made for no other cause but to give the gospel. If you're looking for something, to join and to give your moment, I want to introduce to you an organization that is called Hope Corps. Hope Corps is a generation or it is, a, is an organization that is helping give our young people tools to navigate the world that we live in. Hope Corps, not only is it just a program, but it's a catalyst of what God is doing to bring end time revival. If you are looking for something to give your time into, I want to ask you, consider Hope Corps. Hope Corps is around a, a two semester long period of going deeper into the word of God, of doing doctrinal studies, of finding out what you really need to know when you hit it to the streets. You will learn into cultural studies. You will learn how to teach a Bible study because that is exactly what we need to do in this day. Hope Corps, not only is it going to get you deeper, not only is it going to root you, not only is it going to excite you, but it's going to connect you. It's going to connect you with a whole large group of apostolic Pentecostal young people that are sold out, that are not playing games. And as we know, we cannot play games today. 
We, we, we can't afford to play games in the world that we live in. We need the real deal. We need real apostolic young people that will be the same in the altars, that will be the same outside. And as you take that six-month course, and as the Word of God gets poured into you, there should be something that arises in you and says, I just can't learn this on my Mac, but I got to take this out and attack my neighborhood. I got to go out and get a burden for a city. Because what does it matter if we gain everything that we've ever been taught, if we soak up all the preaching and nobody ever hears about what God is wanting to do? It's going to connect you with apostolic young people and create unbreakable bonds. I'm a 2018 alumni, and I went to the ITW of Norway. As many of you know, I'm no, I believe and I know there's a lot of alumni here. And if the alumni are here, can you just raise your hands in this house so I can see who you are all over the house. Blue Army, raise your hands. Amen. Thank you. And we thank God for what God has done in every single past ITW. And we thank God for every move of God that we had. Maybe you went to Rotan A, Rotan B, Rotan C. Maybe you went to Norway. Maybe you went to the Philippines. Maybe you went to Manhattan. Or maybe you went to Memphis. Wherever you have been, there's still a need for us to push. And there's still a need for us to go. People are looking for something to jump on. And this is something that will help us. And will not only help us and help you get grounded, but while you get grounded, you can reach your hand out to another brother just like we saw exemplify last night. And you can pull them out of the fire. If there ever been a day where the devil is looking to take out apostolic Pentecostal young people, let me let you know that today is that day. Because he knows if we can get serious, if he knows that we can do more than just a shout and get in the prayer room, if he knows that we can study the word of God, he shot if he knows that we can give ourselves wholly to the kingdom, the chains will break in our cities. I want the chains to break in my cities. I just don't want to boast about revival. I just don't want to talk about revival. But my God, I want to see revival. I want to tell my own stories. I want to lay hands in the sick and see them recover. And in this moment, if you feel a pool and you are interested perhaps in joining and getting a little bit more information about this thing called Hope Corps, Hope core, hope core, hope core. If you're interested in that, I'm sure we're going to have information and slides and numbers. If you have questions, please come after me after service. I'll do the best that I can to connect you and to let you know how to get involved in the program. But this is more than just another program. It's more than just a fun little vacation that you take. It's more than just a little photo op that you can take. But this is something, if you can take it serious, that God will use and he will push you to help bring the revival to your city. And I want to know... If there are any young people that are sold out for the kingdom, that are sold out for the purpose of serving God, come on, we don't need no counterfeits. We don't need no fake. Come on, we don't need no, we don't need, we don't, we need someone that just can shout and sing. But we need someone that can be real when they're all by themselves. We need somebody that can be real. And in this moment, we can only just take this atmosphere that we feel in this place. The anointing is, is heavy in this house. Everything has been so first class. The singing, the musicians, the everything is just so powerful. And I know that we can shout and we can cry, but it is the will of God that God duplicates and that God replicates all throughout when we go back home. It's the will of God that we take this back. You see all these visitors here. You see everything that they're doing. It's because somebody has decided to be sold out more than just on a Sunday night. They decided more than get ready just on a Saturday night preparing for Sunday. But they said, if I'm going to be in this seven days out of the week 24 hours of a day then my God please use me in this moment we have a group of young people that are here that I believe that are sold out because this is that even if you don't believe it let me let you know you are the generation you are the church you are who God's been looking for and God is ready and equipping you we are living in a postmodern generation and God has given us the tools necessary to combat win and conquer before Christ returns so in this moment why don't we pray for our cities why don't we pray for revival why don't we pray for deeper conviction why don't we pray that the will of God begins to stir us up to the point that maybe we're gonna have to change a little bit of our plans but maybe we're gonna have to change a little bit of our agenda come on may maybe we got to give up some time to go to another country we've never been before for a week maybe you're not gonna have to do the extracurricular activity because you've got to go home and do an in-depth study on the book of Ruth just maybe just maybe come on in this moment why don't we ask God to begin to pour out his conviction and his word to stir us God, we need a move in our cities. We need a move in our hearts. We need a move in our neighborhoods. God, this world is dying and they are hungry for you. Oh, 
God, I pray blessing, God, over this generation. God, I pray favor over this generation. I pray boldness over this generation. God, I pray, God, that when they go out to the streets, they will not become harmless, but, God, they will become mighty, God. Mighty. I want to ask that you seriously consider Hope Corps. If you have questions, if you don't know what it's about, if you have just heard some other thing about Hope Corps and you thought it was just some fancy little program and you get a cool little shirt even though you do, it's more than that. And if you will take it serious, God will begin to do something in your life. In this moment, um, as we transition, why don't we just continue just to allow the presence of God stir and convict you. I'm open for questions after service. But we have a number that you can text. Text 313-3131. And they will begin to send you an application and make everything very easy. In this moment, let's ask that God begins to do the work. In Jesus, your mighty name, God, I pray that your word would go forth. God, I pray, God, that you would convict, stir, and equip every single young person to go back, God, into their cities. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Come on, somebody, let's worship him tonight.
came to this conference meeting, I don't know what you need, but tonight, Jesus is in the building. Your healer is in the building tonight. Your way maker is in the building tonight. Somebody call the name. Somebody call the name. I will call on the name of my God. Steady always answers. Steady always shows up right on time. I God, something begins to happen when you call on the name of Jesus. Something, the atmosphere begins to shift when you call on the name of Jesus. Woo! Amen. God is so good. God is so good. You can make your way back to your seats. I'm just going to go through a few announcements. Woo! Somebody say tonight. Say tonight. Tonight after the service, we are heading to Gator Mike's. The location is right up here. You can just take a picture of it. The cost is $20 per person, and that gets you into the park, as well as unlimited arcade games, batting cages, mini golf, go-kart rides, two slices of pizza, and a drink. Now, this is the thing. You have to purchase your wristband tonight after service. You have to go in there with, you have to go to Gator Mike's with your wristband. They won't let you in. Also, if you are 
younger than 18 years old, you will need to make sure that you have adult supervision with you. We want to make sure that you're having fun and being responsible. Amen? Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor. This is what you got to do, all right? Look, now I know that you all are fearless, okay? But you need to go and tell the world that you're fearless. And you need to, go, need to buy some Rock Church shirts and fearless shirts and just tell the whole world that you're fearless. Amen? I got some fearless apostolics in the house. Amen. Amen. Also, there's a bunch of other vendors, HGRs here, all this good stuff. So just go and make sure after service you go and support. There's nothing like it. Amen. Also, take as many photos as possible. I don't care if you have 500 gigabytes, whatever. Do what you got to do to take as many pictures as possible. Make as much memories as you can and make sure you use our hashtag impact trc 2020 amen amen let's clap our hands and welcome all the guests come on let's stand to our feet let's stand to our feet come on impact 2020 let's begin to clap our hands welcome all the guests and visitors welcome hgr and all our online guests let's just take a few moments step out of our seats and greet 100 people in jesus name
tonight come on if you're happy and you know it somebody give him a praise in this house shout it yeah. Woo. anybody having a good time Friday night of impact tonight Woo. there is no telling what God is going to do in this place before we leave how many of you know who your neighbor is Turn to somebody behind you and tell them what your name is. What your name is. Now tell them your name. Introduce yourself. Hi. How you doing? How your mama doing? How your mama doing? How your mama doing? How your daddy doing? <laughs> Ooh. How many of you know living for God is the best life? Whoever said living for God had to be boring, uh, man, they told you a lie. Uh, this is the most exciting, uh, the most fun, uh, the most amazing life. I wish I had about 800 radical people in the building uh, that would just let hell know uh, I'm living my best life uh, right now. I'm living my best life right now. Woo! God bless you. You may be seated tonight in Jesus' name. Lift your voice and shout the name Jesus. Oh, I believe that there's a better shout in you than that. I want everybody that's ever been healed by that name, ever been delivered by that name, lift up your voice and shout, Jesus! Call that name, call that name. Come on, call that name. Come on, call that name, call that name. Come on, I need to hear a church call the name! Jesus!
thirst after righteousness, but they shall be filled. Jesus, say to the world, you're a light, shining in the darkness, a city on the hill. Jesus, taught us how to pray. Our Father, which I live.
He's the bread of the money star. He's the fairest of 10,000. He's the way maker. He's the miracle worker. He is the prince of peace. He is God Almighty. And there is none like him. He's a deliverer. Hallelujah. What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! No other name. No other name. None beside him. He has no rival. He has no equal. He is God Almighty. I get happy when I call that name. Adam, devils tremble at the name of Jesus. Corona can't stand in the name of Jesus. Nothing like the name. Woo! 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 I'm trying to move on. My God, my God. Y'all act like people of the name. You're acting like people of the name. There's no other name under heaven given to my men whereby we must be saved. but that name saved me. It brought me out of the miry clay. He picked me up, set my foot on solid ground. Gotta move on, gotta move on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all feel that right there? Y'all feel that right there? Woo! Now we come to the part of the service where we give in Jesus' name. Are you still excited? Matthew 6, 19, 19 through 21. I'm going to read out the amplified version. It says, do not store up for yourselves material treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. And that's Jesus. He is our focal point. At all, amen. As we prepare to give our offering, ushers are positioned. Tithing for some of us, if you're TRC, we understand our monetary treasure goes to support the continuation of the kingdom of God here in Fort Myers. Amen. How many of you love Fort Myers? I feel so strongly in the Holy Ghost that what will and what has already taken place in this house will produce eternal implications in the lives of us all. So here you're also able to give online directly from your phone by way of our Rock Church at Fort Myers, amen? Or you can visit our website right now. Say, I didn't, you didn't come with cash, hop on the app, Hop on the website, rockchurchftmyers.com. There is an application there that you can click on and give in Jesus' name. All right? Are you ready to worship? 
Hallelujah. Worship with us as we sing. Something happens when we call their name. Yeah. Whoa. Something happens when I call your name. 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 
If you know he's under your feet, if you know he's under your feet, yes, he got out of my shot. Would you dance? Somebody shout yes. Your neighbor, give me a little room tonight. Uh, give me a little room tonight. Uh, would you dance with me? Would you dance with me? Uh, hey! Somebody lift your hands in the presence of the Lord right now. Woo! Woo! Yalamaya Dorobo Shatalabakata. Woo! I feel like God is taking somebody uh, from the defense uh, and putting you back on the offense tonight. Yalama uh. Shatayalabosha. Woo! Come on, lift those hands. There's strength in this building right now. Come on, there's strength in this building right now. Oh, come on, that's it. Just a few more moments. Just a few more moments. Let's flow under the unction of God's anointing right now. I want you to remain standing right where you're at tonight. Just remain in this, in this posture of worship right where you're standing tonight. I can't think of a better atmosphere for the word of the Lord to come into this house than what we're feeling in this place right now. Pastor Wesley Jackson is no doubt not a stranger to anybody in this building. God has used this man in an absolutely miraculous way across our globe. And it is by the providence and the hand of God that he is here on assignment tonight. Pastor Jackson, we want you to obey the Holy Ghost tonight. This entire sanctuary is hungry and we're desperate for what God wants in this place tonight. Uh, would you lift your hands one more time in this sanctuary? Uh, and would you begin to lift up your voice uh, and call upon the name of the Lord in this house? As Pastor Jackson comes to deliver the Word of God to this house tonight. Come on, let's 
come to him just another moment together. Hands raised, eyes closed. Come on, let's prepare our hearts for what God has. Why don't you take them hands and put them together for the atmosphere that God has allowed us to be in right now. You ought to lift your voice and shout unto him with a voice of victory for he's worthy. Come on, you can do just a little bit better than that. Shout unto him for he is worthy. to the sensitivity and the response of you wonderful young people seeing your desire and your hunger and your willingness to give God your all is to be commended and, uh, no doubt God has set the stage for us to receive a word from him I'll let you make your way back to your seats very quickly. You can remain standing. And as you're turning to the book of Numbers, the 13th chapter, I want to say publicly what I have expressed privately. And that is how honored I am to be here with Pastor and Sister Williams and the entire Rock Church family. These are tremendous people, visionaries, leaders, people you can ride the river with. And we appreciate them opening up their facility, inviting all of us to come. Why don't we hear it for Pastor and Sister Williams in this local church? Oh, yeah. Friend, Pastor Buxton, what a word. Thank you, Brother Buxton, for delivering your soul. We believe what you preached. I believe what you preached. <laughs> Can I say we believe what he preached? As you ministers that are in this congregation tonight, I salute you, I honor you honor. It's so wonderful to have my family here with me. My wife, my three children, Bella, Brant, Annabelle, and some others from our assembly. We were coming anyways. <laughs> Tickets bought. Place to stay booked. And I didn't find out I was preaching much before you did. In the church, I believe it was Wednesday morning, as is my custom, I try to get by that church every morning, and I was praying and God began to speak very specifically to me and I thought that I would be preaching to the wonderful saints that I'm privileged to pastor in Generet on Sunday. God, thank you. I'm a very poor replacement for Brother Cody Marks. Uh, he is one of my absolute favorite preachers. Tremendous man of God. And there are many young people in this house, even tonight. Cody Marks to deliver a word that picked up and put you out. I am going to do my best to give you that God has apologies for what I'm going to preach. I know that it's from God, and I will not spend the remainder of my allotted time before you 
trying to qualify what I'm going to say. I'm just going to preach like I was at home. Is that all right with you? Well, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. So as I get to preaching, just remember this. I didn't know I was getting this for you. I thought I was getting this for precious saints of God, Calvary. The Bible says in the 13th chapter of the book of Numbers in the 30th verse, and Caleb, everybody shout Caleb, and Caleb stilled the people before Moses. I want you to understand what's happening here because it's, it's very important. Moses is their man of God. Moses is the called leader, visionary, the man of God that God has set over them to watch over them. But you know what? Every man of God needs some people of God. This isn't a part of my notes. Of course, I don't have many. But I wonder what kind of revival the churches represented here tonight would have if when you got home, you didn't wait on your preacher to take a stand, but you took a stand. Because that's what Caleb did. He stilled the people. They were fussing. They were griping. They were doubting. They were murmuring. And the Bible doesn't say that Moses mounted the pulpit. The Bible says that a man from the pew stilled the people. And you know why he was able to steal the people in the pew? Because he was connected and following the man that was in the pulpit. And he said, let us go up at once. Let's not even wait around here, Moses. Let us go up at once. For we are well able to overcome it. Very quickly, the 14th chapter. The 6th verse, and Joshua, the son of Nun, and who? So you, you, you you need to notice the distinction. Joshua was getting ready to be the next pastor. But Caleb, is still representing you on the pew. He stood with the present leader and he made it known, I'm going to stand with the future leader. I'm just here to possess the promise and I'm going to help whoever's going to get me there. He rent his clothes and he spake unto the company of the children of Israel, saying the land, which we have passed through to search is an exceeding good land. And then he gives the key to possessing the promise. Last night, Brother Buxton so masterfully told us about the war, described to us the war, preached to us the promise, Tonight, I'm going to tell you how to win the war and how to possess the promise. He said, if we can just get the Lord to delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it us a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land. Rebel not against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land. See, there's a correlation to no fear. It's not doing your own thing, it's doing God's thing.
There's a lot more that we can read. You see how the congregation, they get upset. They blame Moses. They cry all night. And God gives judgment. But right in the middle of his judgment, he stops and brings another spirit with him. And hath followed me fully. Him will I bring into the land whereinto he went, and his seed shall possess it. If God will help me tonight, I want to talk to you for just a few moments from this very simple thought. A kingdom that is in need of a Caleb. A kingdom that is in need of a Caleb. I've asked Bishop Elder to pray before you're seated tonight. Would you just close your eyes and open up your hearts as he does so right now? God of heaven, we thank you for sending this man of God to us. We thank you for the presence of the Lord that we already feel. Now, Lord, arrest our attention. Arrest our hearts. Bring them in submission to the word of God. Give this man of God a special anointing to speak as the oracle of God. Give him the courage to say what you put in his heart to say. Give us the courage to receive it and to act upon it because we know that if we do your word, nothing formed against us shall prosper. We pray all of this. Let your liberty flow in this house. Let your word go forth in the name of Jesus and everybody give that name a high praise right now. bless you as you're seated here in the rich, wonderful presence of our great God. I believe with all of my heart tonight, it's not cliche-ish, it's not to be redundant, it is not to motivate you, inspire you, it is not to hype you up or create sensationalism. I truly believe with all my heart that the church is living in its greatest hour and that today is the greatest day of opportunity since the initial outpouring of the Holy Ghost in the book of Acts. I really do believe that tonight. I, I believe that opportunity abounds like at no other time in the history of the New Testament church. And, and it's here that we find ourselves so close to the fulfillment of so many prophecies and so many promises both that we read from the Word of God and prophecies that's laid dormant in many of our churches for many, many years. Uh, we, we as a people, we as the church of the living God, I believe, are closer to the fulfillment of promise than we have ever been just as the children of Israel were in our text here tonight. It is the parallel of this text. It, it, it is the commonality of, of this setting which we have uh, used tonight to begin what God has put on my heart. It is the parallel of this text and its setting to the day and hour that you and I are living in right now that along with both a mandate from the Apostle Paul in Corinthians and the writer of Hebrews to use this setting as an example to us uh, that has drawn me to use this text and use this setting in Scripture to deliver to you what I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God has placed on my heart. It is here in the book of Numbers in the 13th chapter where we begin to read how that just as we are today, Israel is closer than they had ever been to possessing the promises which God had promised them that they could have. As you begin to read here in Numbers, the 13th chapter, Israel 
has already been brought out of Egypt. They have already went through the Red Sea. They have already received inspiration, revelation, and direction from Sinai. They had been given instruction by the hand of God through the man of God. And, and yet, yet, after having been brought out of Egypt and after having been brought through the Red Sea, after watching Pharaoh and his army and the things that had been keeping them so bound and restricted for 430 years, uh, buried at the bottom of that sea, uh, after already seeing bitter water made sweet, after already eating manna that had fallen from heaven, after already seeing God work and move uh, and bring them right to the precipice of their promise, uh, in our text tonight, we see that with, with such potential and on the verge of possessing not just a promise, but their ultimate promise, the promise that God had given to Abraham over 400 years before. By the time we get through reading the setting, uh, we, we all of a sudden have people who were full of potential and standing on the verge uh, of their greatest opportunity. Now starting a wandering in the wilderness uh, to die one by one uh, without ever inhabiting uh, that which God said uh, that they could have. Uh, everybody from 20 years of age upward uh, saved two men, one of which I want to use to preach tonight. Uh, in just a few moments time, in just a few days, a window of opportunity, they did not respond properly uh, to the promise that was before them. And they got their eyes off of the mark. They, they begin to look around and listen uh, to the words of their peers and the words of men rather than laying hold and wrapping up tight the word of God. Uh, and we see Israel transition uh, from a march towards possession uh, to a wandering uh, to their death, uh, except uh, for Joshua and Caleb. Uh, and if God would help me tonight, I want to help you understand uh, through the eyes of Caleb uh, why it is uh, that when God uh, began to test these men uh, and when God uh, began to present the challenge uh, that was before them, uh, I want to help you understand uh, what separated Caleb uh, from the rest of the crowd. I, I want to help you understand uh, why Caleb uh, did not have to wander into death, uh, but would keep marching uh, towards possession. Uh, I want to preach to you tonight uh, because I feel that we're just where these people in our text were. Uh, and no doubt there will be some uh, that will return to the wilderness. Uh, no doubt there will be some uh, that become casualties uh, and die by the wayside. Uh, but let me tell you about me. Uh, and let me tell you about Generat. Uh, and let me tell you about the young men and young ladies I'm preaching to tonight. Uh, we're going to have some Caleb's uh, in the camp uh, that says you can die uh, if you want to die. Uh, you can lose out uh, if you want to lose out. Uh, you can wonder uh, because of the words of man. Uh, but as for me and my house, uh, we're going to go up at once. Uh, for we are well able. To possess the land. See, this, this, this fearless faith, this, this fearless radical faith, it, it did not just happen spontaneously. But it was a man, if I could use Brother Buxton's words, that in peacetime Pentecost, he was watching he was receiving revelation. He was receiving instruction because he recognized uh, that every promise has a price. And God already told us before we were to get there that he would go before us uh, and drive out our enemies, uh, which means there's going to be a war uh, when we step in uh, and say we're taking over. 
And what gave Caleb that fearless faith? And what gave Caleb that attitude of, yes, we can. Let's go up at once and possess it. What separated him from his peers and his contemporaries uh, is he recognized uh, that, yes, we can do this. Uh, Yes, uh, we can possess the promise. Uh, Yes, uh, we can have revival. Uh, Yes, uh, we can still fill up our buildings uh, and build new sanctuaries in 2020. Uh, Yes, uh, our people can still be blessed coming in uh, and still be blessed going out. Uh, Yes, uh, we're still the head uh, and not the tail. Uh, Yes, uh, no weapon formed against us uh, shall prosper. Uh, But Caleb understood uh, I can't do this by myself. I can't do this on my own. I can't do this with the intellect of man. The only way I can do this is I've got to get the favor of God. I've got to keep the favor of God. And I've got to walk in the favor of God. Because without favor, without favor, without God happy, I'm no match for that which I'm facing. I think too many of us quoted and get excited without truly embracing what the Apostle Paul said when he said, greater is he that is within you. He didn't say, greater are you. He didn't say that you know what it takes to overcome. He didn't say that you have it all figured out uh, and you can just give us your wisdom uh, and you can just lead us with your intellect uh, and we can overcome. Uh, But he said you got something on the inside of you uh, that if you can stir it up uh, and if you can make that that's on the inside get happy uh, with what you're doing on the outside, uh, no weapon formed against you uh, shall prosper. I feel like preaching a little bit here tonight. The devil is a liar. I don't care what anybody else has told you. Uh, The church ain't backing up. Uh, The church ain't falling apart. And the church ain't going down. Uh, The true church is going up. Uh, But we can't do it by ourselves. Uh, We can't do it on our own. Uh, We've got to have the favor of God. Somewhere, you can sit down, I'm just talking to you right now. Somewhere, Caleb received revelation and embraced an anointing and understood some things that I want to preach to you here tonight. And that is, without him, I can do nothing. If he's upset at me, It doesn't matter who's happy with me. I'm not going to be victorious. But if I can get him happy with me, if somehow I can just get God to delight in me, and if somehow you can just get God to delight in you, and if somehow we can just get God uh, to delight in us, uh, I'm going to tell you what we can do. Uh, we can have Book of Acts revival uh, in 2020. Uh, we can see cloven tongues like as a fire uh, settle on everybody in the house. Uh, we can literally turn our world uh, upside down. Uh, but we can't do it without the favor of God. Caleb, Caleb had been observant. He had been through some things. He he had paid attention. And as my bishop, who I honor tonight, has beat into us, he he learned to connect some dots, Brother Duty. And, And one thing that he recognized, one thing that he understood and gave him such fearless faith as he understood that every provision, every provision, every provision will turn into our prison if we ever quit pursuing the promise. 
See, see, he was the great, 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 great grandchild of the people who went into Egypt by way of provision. He, he knew better than any of us the covenant and promise that God had made to Abraham that I'm going to give you as far as your eye can see and the people, the revival that I'm going to give uh, is going to be like the sand on the seashore and the stars that are in the sky. He knew, he knew that it was going to come to pass uh, because he recognized uh, that when God could swear by no greater, he swore by himself. I'm going to bless you, Abraham. I'm going to prosper you, Abraham. I'm going to bless them that bless you. I'm going to curse them that curse you. Not because of who you are, but because of the covenant that you have. Abraham, I'm going to bless you because of covenant. And as long as you're in pursuit of the promise, but don't get out of my will and expect me to fight your battle. Don't get out of my will and expect me to help you possess the promise. Uh, don't get out of my wheel uh, and get complacent and get comfortable uh, and think that I'm just going to go on as business as usual. Uh, when you quit pursuing the promise, uh, the provision turns into prison. In a time of need, God gave Egypt as a provision. But what happened in Egypt is exactly why Pentecost is dealing with what it's do, dealing with today. They go down into Egypt, which is the provision. And in the provision, they become more blessed than they had ever been. All of a sudden, uh, they're not wandering around, uh, but they're being given positions that are important. All of a sudden in the provision, uh, it looks like that it can't get any better uh, because it's one of ours uh, that is second in the kingdom. Uh, let me just stop and remind you something, sweetheart. Uh, God doesn't play second uh, to nobody. Uh, and the people of God uh, are not second uh, to any people. Uh, you may be second in the provision, uh, but when you get in the promise, uh, it's dominion, uh, it's authority, uh, it's power. It's God with us. But see, just like some of us, they get comfortable in the provision and they get to talking about why make a sacrifice and press anymore. Look how good we've got it here. I mean, we've got 200, uh, and we gave 150,000 last year to missions, and we gave 80,000 to home missions, and and for IG moments, we got six vans running, and we make sure to post the same picture of the kid we took three years ago uh, so that everybody thinks we're doing something. Uh, why should we keep pressing? Uh, I'll tell you why you got to press, uh, because the provision will run out uh, when you're not in pursuit of the promise. Uh, that's why we're having churches close down. Uh, that's why we're having powerless preachers in pulpits uh, and carnal saints in the pew uh, because we got complacent and we got comfortable uh, and we quit pursuing promise uh, and our provision uh, took us into slavery. See, see, Caleb had watched all this <laughs> and he said, I just got out of that. If you think I'm going back into that, God forbid uh, that when things change, uh, if they change, uh, that we forget the lessons uh, that God's trying to teach us right now. All of a sudden, not by wrath or judgment, but because he knew Brother Buxton, he had something better for them. Bible says that God just set somebody up who didn't even know who Joseph was. And he looked around and said, we're providing provision for a people who are mightier than I. And if they ever recognize their potential, <laughs> if they ever 
ever recognize who they are and if they ever remember uh, the God that has called them and if they ever remember uh, that the same God that gave them provision uh, is the same God that gave them promise, uh, if they ever wake up and get stirred up, uh, it's game over. Uh, and so all of a sudden, Pharaoh says, uh, we better get them busy uh, doing Egypt things. Uh, we better get them busy uh, doing it Egypt's way. Uh, we better bring them into captivity. Uh, we better get them making bricks. Uh, we better get them gathering straw. Uh, because if we ever let them out to worship, uh, there's something about when they begin to worship their God. Uh, if they ever begin to freely worship him again, Again, uh, we're in trouble. Oh. So, so they enter into prison because they quit pursuing promise. I'm, I'm telling you why the kingdom is in need of a Caleb. Because just as that day that God spoke to Moses and told him, go down there, I'm getting them out. So has God allowed what we're dealing with, Bishop Elder, right now in 2020 uh, to release uh, and re-expose the people of God to the true power that rests upon us. And Caleb recognized that that water out of a rock, <laughs> I wasn't meant to stay there and drink forever. That, that online service, <laughs> we, we, we wasn't meant to do that more than about two days in a row. That stopping all of our outreach uh, and shutting down our buses uh, and turning off our vans uh, and saying we're doing it uh, for the wisdom uh, of the world. Uh, let me tell you, baby, uh, you'll go back to the provision. Uh, if you like the provision, uh, you can stay in prison. Uh, but God's got something better. Uh, he's got a good land. Uh, he's got a large land. Uh, he's got a land that has more than a trickle, uh, more than a provision. Uh, God's got a land that But for all you that are shouting now, I want you to stay shouting here. Caleb understood that it was prayer that got us out. And it was prayer that brought us to here. And it's going to take prayer for us to take the next step and go into there. See, you, you, you can be seated. You, that way I'll see if you're really shouting about what I'm preaching or you're just scared to sit down so we'd know you weren't with it. See, see, the Bible says in Exodus, the third chapter, throw it up there for me, please. The Lord said, I've seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt but he had been seeing that for 430 years. He said, but now <laughs> I've heard a cry that they have started crying out because of their affliction. So Moses, uh, you go down there and tell them, uh, I'm not just going to bring them out, uh, but because of their prayer, uh, I'm going to take them in too. Uh, let me tell you something, Pentecost. Uh, God's got more than enough power uh, to simply bring us out. Uh, when God delivers us out of things, uh, it's to deliver us into things. Uh, when God brings us out, uh, it's to bring us into. I told you I wasn't going to explain myself. I'm just going to preach it. If you have a problem with it, take it up with him when it's over. But Caleb understood, I can't protest my way into the promise. He understood, I cannot podcast my way into the promise. 
he understood I cannot influence my way into the promise. He understood I couldn't fight municipalities and get into the promise. It's not about defying governments that will give me in the promise. He understood that prayer is what brought us out. And prayer is the only thing that can take us into See, see, I've got to preach this tonight because you have to understand that Pentecostalism, which is people who have experienced Pentecost, people who have the power to overcome for Acts 1 and 8 says, ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Embracing the promise that these signs shall follow them that believe. And I'm afraid, uh, and I'm preaching to us here tonight because you're the people that's here. Uh, you're the people who's been willing to step out. You're the people who's been willing to take a stand. Uh, and so you're who just needs to hear this preaching. Uh, you have to understand uh, that Pentecostalism uh, is not measured by patriotism. Because God did not call me to fight for my citizenship and my rights down here. God has anointed me to possess that which is in the spiritual that will take me over there. And I'm watching a lot of people that think they're really taking a stand. And they are. But they're taking a stand that's not going to get them anywhere. You can't win this battle in a courtroom. You can't win this battle protesting. You can't win this battle carrying signs. If you're going to win this battle, you got to get back down on your knees. you got to get your face back in a carpet. And you got to pray. you got to pray. You gotta pray. You gotta pray. You know what we need? We need a Caleb prayer warrior. We need a Caleb, a brother Caleb, a sister Caleb. They would say, I'm not much on protesting, but you can count on me to be a prayer meeting. Let me just tell you a little something. Donald Trump can't get you out of poverty. Joe Biden can't fix racism. Nancy Pelosi can't cure COVID. And Mitch McConnell can't erase poverty. If the church is going to be healed, if the church is going to be prosperous, if the church is going to be free, the church needs to quit playing politics in the world and start fighting in the heavens. You can sit down. He watched that. And he said, I'm, I'm not doing that. He, he watched a little something else. He watched Israel put down their tamarine, tambourine and allow bitterness to get in their heart. And I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of people in conservative Pentecost right now. They don't realize how close to being lost over bitterness that they really are. You can't talk to them without them trying to convince you they're the victim. It's who's attacking me, who's talking about me, who's doing this, who's doing... You know what made you start thinking like that? You put down your tambourine. They get through the Red Sea. They stand there. And it wasn't just the men, baby. It was the girls also. The Bible said they picked up a tambourine. And they started dancing. Saying the horse and the rider has been cast into the sea. And though they didn't embrace it. 
The power of that praise was so great that the inhabitants of the land began to shake with fear as they said, if God can do that to Pharaoh, God can do that to us. <laughs> but they get about three days out of the Red Sea and they come to some bitter water. They come to some unfavorable circumstances. Uh, they come to some things that aren't going their way. Uh, and all of a sudden, uh, they start, start shaking their fist at the man of God. Uh, they start shaking their fist at the Amalekites. Uh, they start shaking their fist at the Moabites. Uh, they start cursing the church. Uh, they start rising up against the preacher. Uh, you know why? Uh, because they put down their tambourine uh, and they quit praising uh, and they started complaining. Uh, you know what Pentecostal's problem is? Uh, we've been pampered for so long uh, that we don't know how to shout unless they're doing a run uh, on the keyboard. Uh, we don't know how to dance uh, unless pastor uh, is pushing us out of our comfort zone. Uh, you know what some of you need to do? Uh, you need to remember that God brought you out of Egypt. Uh, you need to remember that God put the horse and the rider uh, into the sea. Uh, and you need to get your dance back. Uh, you need to learn how to shout uh, when it's dry. Uh, you need to learn how to shout uh, when it's a plague. Uh, you need to learn how to shout when it's bitter water, we need some Caleb's in the kingdom. Some of you still too cute to get loose. That's all right, die in the wilderness. Some of you still has too much pride to jerk off your tie and kick off your high heels. That's okay. Stay bitter. Uh, stay bitter. Uh, stay bitter. Uh, stay telling us why we can't. Uh, stay telling us why it won't happen. Uh, but I'm going to tell you about the Caleb's. Uh, let's go, boys. Uh, let's go, girls. Uh, let's go. Uh, let's go. Uh, let's go. Uh, let's go. When did Pentecost get so proper that praise could be too loud? When did Pentecost get so programmed uh, that the beating of a cymbal uh, or the noise of a bass uh, or the hammering of the strings uh, gets on our nerves? Uh, it wasn't getting on your nerves uh, when the horse and the rider were drowning. Uh, what changed? Uh, why is it getting on your nerves now? He, he understood you can't lose a tambourine. I'm glad you're standing. He understood. Are you listening to me? He understood that we can't just let God get us out of Egypt. We've got to let God get Egypt out of us. He watched. He watched. He watched that in a moment's time with Passover, that they were driving them out, loaded with Egyptian spoils. They never had to pick up a sword. They never had to have a casualty lost to the battle. And yet they walked out with the storehouses of the world because of Passover. And in one moment's time, God brought them out of Egypt. But they died in the wilderness because they never let God get Egypt out of them. When they were hungry, they didn't praise. They reached back to what they had left in Egypt. When things wasn't going their way, 
They didn't, I wish I had a tambourine. I should have bought my own. What kind of church is this? No, I, it's a devil stomping church. A one God apostolic, Jesus' name, aisle running, devil chasing, Holy Ghost dancing, fire praying church. Church. Where's Isaac at? Come here, Brother Isaac. Where you at? Hurry, run. We ain't got no tambourine. I've learned that symbols gets on people's nerves just as bad. That's why at Calvary I do both. Sometimes I beat a symbol with a tambourine just to see what they'll post on Facebook about me. Can you, can you take one of them symbols off and just walk with me for just a second? You mind? No, no, the whole deal, because you fix it beat it. Yeah. There you go. Your stick. I'll help you. When, no, no, you, 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 you don't help me. When things weren't going their way, Instead of dusting off their praise instruments, they started thinking, well, you know, maybe we didn't have it so bad in Egypt. The Bible says that the people begin to lust. And they remembered the leeks, and they remembered the meat, and they remembered the garlic, and they they remembered all the things that was convenient to remember. They didn't remember getting raped when they were three years old by an alcoholic. They, they forgot that. They didn't, they didn't remember being raised by an alcoholic. And somehow God had mercy on me and let me ride a van to church. Uh, and then God helped me get an education. And then God helped me get a good job. And then, no, 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 no. All they could remember uh, is I can't wear this. Uh, and I can't wear that. Uh, and I can't go here. Uh, and I can't. That's why Pentecost uh, is in trouble uh, because we got so blessed uh, that dyed hair quit bothering us uh, and makeup quit being offensive uh, and you could still get in the choir uh, with your dress above your knees uh, and you could still sing a solo uh, with your cleavage showing uh, and you could still put on this uh, and you could put on that. Uh, you know why? Uh, because they got caught having heaven in their hand uh, and hell in their heart. Uh, they had a promise before them. Uh, they had Egypt behind them. Uh, and as long as things were going all right, uh, they could give God some praise. Uh, but you let some start going wrong uh, and they wanted to go back to Egypt. Uh, but Caleb said, uh, I'm going to praise him in the good times. Uh, I'm going to praise him in the bad times. Uh, I'm going to praise him when we're in Egypt. Uh, I'm going to praise him when we're in the wilderness. Uh, I'm going to praise him uh, when I get into the promise. Uh, you know why? Because uh, the worship uh, is not something I do. Uh, worship uh, is who I am. Uh, worship uh, is not about my circumstances. Uh, worship uh, is about he brought me out. Uh, he picked me up. Uh, he turned me around. tell you, I'm going to tell you why a lot of Pentecost ain't weathering the storm. It's because they got too pretty that they wanted to start fettering the pulpit. And pastor, we'll help you build that new building as long as you don't talk about this. And know the stands you've always taken about Little League, but, but really, we, we just want to teach Johnny some discipline. I'll tell you how you teach Johnny discipline. You get him to an altar. 
when the preacher's preaching, uh, if he's not preaching with the preacher, uh, you stand him up. Come here, brother. Uh, if he's not preaching with the preacher, if he's not old enough to know what's going on, uh, I tell you how you make a champion out of him. Uh, you don't put him on a ball team. Uh, you keep him in your arms uh, as you shout on a platform. Uh, you keep him in your bosom uh, as you talk about what the Lord has done. Uh, we need some Caleb's. Uh, we need some Caleb's. Uh, they don't want to compromise. Uh, they don't want to bow. Uh, they don't want to go back. Uh, they want to go into. Hearts heavy. I want my children to see the promise. I want to come here. Yeah. Do I? I leaned over and told Brother Buxton. I said, I don't mind preaching behind you, but I don't want to preach behind her. <laughs> Do I have the wrong one? <laughs> Let me tell you about the anointing. It's colorblind. It's gender blind. It's economically blind. <laughs> the calling only knows one culture, and that's the culture of the cross. Five children when she come to church, right? You was living a real high life, wasn't you? More money than you could ever spend, a nicer car. Uh, huh? No, sir. <laughs> yeah. And see, I'm going to tell you what's happened to Pentecost. Is we got too many second, third, fourth generation. That all you know is the provision. You don't know the ghetto. And you don't know the hell hole. And, and you don't know the unwanted passes. Uh, and you don't know the scars and the things he had to do just to try to survive. Uh, but I'm going to tell you why there's an anointing on her uh, that it do some of you good young preachers uh, to get a hold of. Uh, instead of typing out all your words, uh, you ought to get you a testimony like she got. Uh, let me tell you what makes her anointed. Uh, you couldn't get her to go back to Egypt. Uh, you couldn't get her to go back. You know what she's saying? Uh, tell my kids how to be saved. Uh, how long do you want our sleeves? Uh, what do you want my kids involved in? Uh, oh, oh, oh. You want them in bus ministry? Uh, they don't have a choice. Uh, they'll be here Saturday morning at 10 o'clock. Uh, let me tell you what Pentecost needs to get back to. Uh, it needs to get back uh, to remembering uh, that we were not a people on our own. Uh, we was lost. Uh, we was undone. Uh, and it wasn't education uh, that put us in a pulpit. Uh, it wasn't education uh, that got us a better job. Uh, it wasn't education uh, that helped to where now uh, we can pay as much in tithe. Uh, is, that's her testimony. Uh, as she used to make in a year, uh, it wasn't Egypt. Uh, it was a man of God. Uh, it was the power of God. Uh, it was the preached word of God. I'm sick of pious, pretty, traditional, dead, dried Pentecost. And I'm going to tell you, if you think internet church is the same as in-gathering church, you're just who I'm preaching to. 
if it didn't feel no different to you uh, sitting in your living room around your coffee table, uh, you've been missing something uh, while we was around the altar. I'm, I'm hurrying. Caleb, talking about the need for Caleb's in the kingdom. Caleb understood that if we want to get out of the prison, through the wilderness, and into the promise, we got to have a tabernacle. And it's got to be at the center of everything that we do. Numbers 9 and 15 says, now on that day, everybody say, what day? What day? Thank you for asking. I want the word of God to tell you. On that day that the tabernacle was reared or built up, the cloud, the glory, the fire, it covered the tabernacle. It didn't cover the tribes. It didn't cover the priest. It didn't cover the psychologist. It didn't cover the elected officials. It sure didn't cover Dr. Fauci. It covered the tabernacle. And all of a sudden, Israel had something uh, that they could depend on, uh, the glory uh, of God. <laughs> Caleb understood, uh, if I can just go to church, uh, I can get through this wilderness. Uh, if I can just go to church, uh, I can get into the promise. Uh, if I can just go to church, uh, my giants will be destroyed. Uh, my walls will fall down. Uh, you know why? Because uh, he's not going to share his glory. Uh, and his glory's at his house. Uh, he's He's not going to share his victory in this house. Uh, he's not. Oh, yeah. I, oh, th Brother Williams is not responsible for this. It's just James Wesley. I have never been more weary and sick and tired of seeing something as I am of people posting 2 Chronicles 7.14. I'm sick to death of it. You know why? Because it's creating a false sense of hope. When you take something out of text and out of context. And you only give part of the text. If you're going to post it. Why don't you start at verse 1? Can you put that up there? I, I want to give you the context. Now when Solomon made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifice and the glory of the Lord filled the house. Brother, may God gets in that glory. And all of a sudden, he gets wisdom that he don't have as just a man. And he says, there, there's going to come a day that you're going to shut up heaven and not let it rain. There's going to come a day that we're going to plant crops and you're going to let pestilence come in and devour our harvest. No doubt, now this is the James Wesley translation, with all these ignoramuses that I'm pastoring, some, that's for you other pastors. I pastor the best people in the world, but I know how you feel. 
No doubt. I'm showing you why I'm sick and tired of people posting 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Makes me just want to throw my wife's phone. Say, well, her, well, her phone. Because I don't believe in social media. But I'm a good snooper. <laughs> Baptizing somebody right now. That's what this kind of preaching does. Stay home and watch YouTube if you want to. Is that what they're doing? Baptizing somebody right now. See, preaching about Egypt only offends carnal saints. It don't offend people in bondage trying to get out. And Solomon says, if we do all this, give me something that will get us out. And the Lord appeared unto Solomon, and this is what he said. If, no, go back. Yeah, right there, 12, thank you. If I, see, you need to understand, nobody but him can shut anything off. That's why you need to quit fighting governments and just get back to making God happy. Because if you get God happy, the government can't shut nothing off. <laughs> Baby, this church has had revival uh, with Nero chopping heads off uh, and with Christians being burned at the stake uh, and with Polycarp having blood run down uh, and put out the fire. Uh, and you think 2020 liberals uh, can stop the work of God? Uh, if he opens a door, uh, can't nobody shut up. He said, if I shut up the heavens, if I command the locusts, you want to keep playing the blame game? Blame the, wrong, the right person instead of the wrong one. Quit blaming America and start blaming God. Because he's the one that shuts it or opens it. He said, if I sin. Well, you ought to shout sometime. You're starting to get it. I feel a Caleb spirit coming into this house. Uh, I feel somebody uh, that says signs and wonders really do still follow uh, them that just preach my name. Uh, he said, if my this is the verse I am sick of y'all quoting. You know why? Because you stop there and act like you can do it in your living room or do it on your way to Walmart. Firstly, again, this is just me. Don't, 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 don't hold anybody else accountable for what I'm saying. But I'm going to help some of you quit praying amiss. God is not going to heal our world. He would have to go contrary to his word to do so. Because he said the world is going to wax worse. And all of y'all posting this like if enough of us pray, God's going to turn around America and God's going to turn around the world. You need to read this verse for what it really says. If my people called by my name humble themselves, uh, turn from their wicked ways, uh, see all the way over in Chronicles, uh, they still had heaven in their hand uh, and hell in their heart. Uh, 
They had done went through the judges. Uh, they had done seen Goliath fall by the wayside. Uh, they, they had done seen Gideon in a wine press. Uh, they had done seen Samson carry off gates uh, and whip the Philistines with a jawbone of an ass. Uh, and they still had heaven in their hand uh, and hell in their heart. Uh, God, give us a Caleb. Uh, give us some Caleb's. Uh, give, give us some Caleb. See, I'm going to tell you, I hadn't always seen this like this either. But I was praying. I'm going to tell you, prayer will bring revelation. Prayer won't bring something new. Because this book is of the ancient of days. If you get something new, you need to go back to prayer. That's another problem with young preachers is they want to preach something new. You won't ever preach any better than when you just stand up and quote, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized. What is this about? You getting another revival? Or are you seeing somebody saved? Oh, Jesus. Can I go ahead and just be me? Let me tell all you young preachers something too. God's anointed you. God's using you. But don't ever get to thinking you're the blessing. I, I know where most of you's preaching. And you're preaching for people that can preach circles around you. You're preaching for preachers that was preaching conferences and youth camps before you ever knew there was a Pentecost. And you think you're going to impress them? You think you're going to woo them? Uh, you know what impresses me? Uh, and I believe I can speak for these other pastors uh, is when somebody gets in that pulpit uh, and they may not have the greatest vocabulary uh, and they may stutter around a little bit, uh, but you can tell they've been with Jesus uh, and there's a sincerity about them uh, and there's a humbleness about them. Uh, it ain't just the preachers. Uh, let me tell you about our people at home. Uh, that's the kind of preachers. Uh, that they get up and run the aisles for. Uh, that's the kind of preachers uh, that they're willing to bring somebody out on a Monday night uh, to have revival with. Uh, you need to forget about your pretty uh, and you need to get back to Pentecost. Uh, I don't know how long I've been going. But Brother Buxton set the bar high. Thank you for preaching what you preached. Let me tell you, that didn't offend the people of God. That offended critical saints. That offended compromisers. That offended Playboy Pentecostals. Uh, that offended hirelings. Uh, and that offended saints uh, wanted their back scratched uh, rather than their soul saved. Uh, I'm not in this to be pretty. Uh, I'm in this to get to heaven. He said... If my people, my people, my name, not the world's ways, their ways, then will I heal their land. You know what he was telling them? If you'll pray, you don't have to worry about what I'm doing on the outside. I'll take care of what's on the inside. It don't matter who's president, what the stock market's doing, uh, or what the price of oil is. Uh, if my people pray, uh, I'll bless them coming in. Uh, I'll bless them going out. Uh, I'll bless them in the city. Uh, I'll bless them in the field. Uh, I'll make them the lender and not the borrower. Uh, I'll make them the head uh, and not the tail. Uh, I'm not going to heal the world, uh, but I'll heal their land. Uh, I'll send people that's broken uh, and I'll put them back together uh, I'll send the weak uh, and make them strong
for those that may be offended, uh, this is signs following. Uh, for those uh, that may have too strong of a hold on Egypt uh, and you didn't let, like me swipe in your little hang up, uh, you need to see uh, what God can do uh, in the midst of it all. But, but this is why I'm tired of seeing y'all post that. Number one, God's not going to heal the world, but he is going to take care of the church. Because the church, not America, the church, not America, the church, not America, the church was built on the rock and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Our country, brother Bucks, to make collapse, uh, but the kingdom uh, is going to grow stronger uh, and stronger uh, and stronger uh, and stronger. <laughs> See, this is the part y'all leave out. My eyes shall be open. And mine ears attend to the prayer that's made as you listen online. That's made as you lock your doors and stay away. No, he said, let me tell you where I'm going to be looking and listening. The same place I've always been looking and listening. I'm going to be looking at my house. I for those of you who think that was Old Testament, keep going. Keep going. Uh, keep going. For I chose, I sanctified this house uh, that my name's there forever uh, and mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. Uh, that is a covenant uh, to which there is no end. Uh, he said, when you set it aside uh, and I sanctify it uh, and I choose it, uh, when you're in trouble, uh, go to church. Uh, when you're in pandemic, uh, go to church. Uh, when you're in the middle of the divorce, uh, Go to church. When your bank's broke and you're going into poverty, go to church. Go to church. Go to the house of the Lord. I know I'm taking my time. Has it ever occurred to some of you? I know it has. Brother Bertram, the you as scholarly as you are. But to a lot of us, I don't think we've connected the dots of where forsake not the assembling of ourselves together is recorded. Because it would be powerful. And it would be a mandate anywhere from Genesis to Revelation. But you need to understand the context of the text. Pentecost has happened. For 2,000 years, Brother Elder... The law and tradition has what has guided them. They can't eat bacon, especially not with ham. They can't go to Cracker Barrel and eat fried chicken and eggs at the same time. They can't fellowship with Gentiles. They can't touch something that's unclean. And now all of a sudden, they're getting told there's a better way. There's a new covenant. Now they're being told uh, to be saved, uh, you don't have to not eat bacon. And to be saved, uh, you don't have to quit eating ham. And to be saved, uh, you don't have to not go to Cornelius' house uh, and teach a Bible study. Uh, and he's, listen to me, uh, he's tearing down tradition uh, after tradition uh, after tradition uh, after tradition. Uh, he's telling him, I know what you've been taught all your lives. Uh, I know what you've been taught since Sinai. Uh, but there's a better way. Uh, there's a better way. Uh, there's a better way. Uh, and then as if the writer remembers something, uh, he says, oh, hold up. Uh, you can eat with the Gentiles. Uh, you can even eat bacon from their table. Uh, but one thing that ain't changed. Uh, 
forsaking not the assembling of yourself together. Even the more so, you know what he was saying? Church was important in the wilderness. It was important under the kings. It was important under the law. And it's important right now. I'm going to make these last 10 points quick. Just kidding. I'm down to nine. Don't tell me it don't work. That's the second one. I do feel a mandate from heaven to quickly give you this. Caleb witnessed what happens in a time of trouble that you don't recognize the difference between Moses' office and your office. Because he was, can you put it on the screen? He, he was sitting there that day that Aaron and Miriam questioned before the people a decision he made. Miriam and Aaron, they spake against Moses because it's of a decision. Because of the Ethiopian woman that he had married spoke against Moses either because he kept his doors open or he kept his doors closed. Either because he worshipped online or kept worshipping in his sanctuary. And Caleb watched something that he had not seen anywhere Except the night of the Passover, he seen God get angry. Put that next verse up there for me. They said, is the office of Moses the only one that has a right to make a decision in these wilderness times? I mean, we talk in tongues. We go to prayer meeting. We pay our tithe. We sing in the choir. Next verse that I gave you. Moses, he, he, he didn't ask for the office. The office asked for him. The, I mean that quick. God thundered and said, get Aaron and get Miriam and get Moses and go to church. When we get to church, I thought you would have learned, Miriam and Aaron, what happened to Cora. But since you think you pay enough tithe, or you have enough followers, or you've got enough Facebook influence, let's go to church. He's going, so they didn't read it in the King James. I'm just going to give it to you in the James Wesley. He said, let me tell you something. If I talk to you, it might be with a little dream that people can decide if they believe it or not. It might be with a little bit of prophesying. Who knows? But when I speak to Moses, when I speak to Moses, when I speak to my servant Moses, it's not so. When I talk to him, 
about. It ain't like talking to you. I value you. I'm giving you a promise. But don't ever forget, you don't have the position I want to carry you into. But don't ever forget, you may have a tambourine and you may have a rod that buds. But Moses, Moses, Moses has my voice. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to stand flat-footed and look you in the eyes and tell you, with a heavy heart and with fear, I tremble at what I've seen some of you post on social media. It doesn't matter what stand your preacher's taking. He's your man of God. But it brings judgment when you judge another man's servant. And I've never been so tired of the vulgarity uh, that's coming forth on the ways of social media about people uh, who ain't making some of the same decisions uh, that your pastor's making. Uh, you don't even understand it. Uh, you're about to lose the glory. Uh, you're about to get leprosy. Uh, you're about to get put out of the camp. When all this started and I was like everybody else, Brother Clack, I was praying. I didn't know what to do. I was trying to feel my way through it, pray my way through it. And I decided that we weren't going to stop having church. And I got up and I told our church that. I said, but let me tell you something. Let me just give you a warning. Don't you get on social media. And don't you get on Facebook. And don't you get on the internet and criticize some other man of God. Because it won't just get you in trouble. It'll get our church in trouble. And if we've ever needed the favor of God, uh, we need it right now. And let me just tell some of you preachers something too. To facilitate that. And it's come from both sides of the aisle. I've seen saints ridicule pastors and churches for staying open and I've seen saints ridicule and pastor churches that close and shame on you hireling not pastor shame on you hireling if you're willing to let your people push a false narrative see you better understand, uh, it's the nature of the man. Uh, when they ever cross that line uh, and they feel like they can touch somebody else that's anointed, uh, it won't be long uh, until they feel like they can touch you. Uh, it won't be long uh, until your right-hand man uh, will be saying, who does he think he is? Uh, I'll just go start my own church. Uh, this... This isn't popular in this day. But I don't care how educated you are. You hear me? You hear me? Am I being plain enough? You understand what I'm preaching? You, are you getting me? You look sharp, but it ain't about looking GQ. You're still in the city while Moses is up on the wall. And the Bible says, Behold, Miriam became white as snow. And Aaron looked upon her, and behold, she was leprous. And the same man that they had questioned got back down on his knees. The preacher didn't go saying, uh-huh, see, that's what you get for closing. He didn't step back and say, see, they wouldn't have backslid if you'd have just stayed open. See, see, this fits both camps. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. 
Moses, he had the heart of a true shepherd. He just got down. And he said, God, you don't know why Moses was really praying for him. Put that next verse up there. Oh, right there. No. The cloud departed from the tabernacle. That's why some of you that's keeping your church doors open still ain't having revival. Because you're letting your people run their mouth about preachers who ain't doing it like you. And the glory's departed from your church. I know I am. Woo. Get on and attack a man of God and be vulgar about it with the people of God watching. You need to find you an altar. Because you're going to lose the glory and it ain't never going to come back. And don't you think it can't ever get to that point? Because God won't always strive with man. Uh, there'll come a day that what you did and allowed in moderation, uh, Hophni and Phinehas will make a complete mockery of. Uh, and Ichabod uh, will be written on your tabernacle. We need a Caleb that recognizes my job. Are you listening to me, Caleb's? My job is it to serve YouTube all week uh, and see what 26 other pastors did uh, in 18 other cities. Uh, my job uh, is to give my ear to my Moses uh, and whatever God puts in his heart, uh, that's what's in my heart. Uh, and wherever he leads, uh, that's where I follow. Uh, and nobody else's business uh, is my business. God don't have no super pastors. When he got ready to even foretell the coming of Christ, he didn't give it all to one man. He broke it up among many men. He had talked to Jeremiah for a minute and then come over here and talk to Amos uh, and then back up over here and talk to Isaiah. And you think you're the voice of Pentecost? Uh, there's only one voice of Pentecost uh, and that's the voice of the Lord. Uh, Caleb said, y'all sit here and murmur if you want to. Yeah. Yeah, da, 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 da. I'm weary. I'm weary. Brother Brandon Frazier, my heart hurts of all the criticism I'm seeing among the people of God. I believe everything that's in that book. Yes. Bishop Elder, uh, Brother Williams, I'm watching pastors, and I've just kind of stepped back, and I'm just shaking my head. And I'm thinking, what are they doing? But I'm going to tell you, Brother Buxton, what I've told my children. You better not let me hear you say something about the way somebody else is doing it. You like these blessings we have? You better keep your mouth shut. You like these nice clothes we're going to conference in? You better keep your mouth shut. You like those nice vehicles that we're driving? Uh, you better keep your mouth shut. Uh, you like the fact that we can fly down there and be in church? Uh, you better keep your mouth shut. You better keep your mouth shut. You better keep your mouth shut. Uh, because it ain't daddy doing this. Uh, it's that we've got the favor of God. Uh, and if we lose that favor, uh, we lose it all. Caleb, Caleb understood this is it. And I know this has been simple and don't judge me too harshly. Caleb understood if 
I get critical, I'll start measuring giants instead of weighing grapes. And Brother Williams, that's what got him in trouble. They said, oh yeah, it's good. It's big. This, this is the fruit. Help me, Brother Williams. This, this is the fruit. And then they put down the grapes because they was carnal. And they started measuring the giant. You know why Pentecost ain't walking into the promise? Because we're measuring the giant instead of weighing the benefits. We're more worried about what the mayor's going to say. We're more worried about what the, the elected official that we've got favor with is going to turn on us. You, you, you know what all this should have taught us, if nothing else? They're only for us as long as we're compliant to their ways. But see, when you're more willing to defy wearing a mask than you are to be faithful to prayer meeting, See, this is what I've told my wife over and over. Because I'm going to tell you, my friends know me. I'm redneck to my core. That's what I like about you. You are a man's man. You ride the river with Tony this year. You have been an example through all this, Brother Williams. Thank you. I salute you tonight in Jesus' name. Somebody said, well, I couldn't, do, I, I couldn't do that. I don't agree with everything my preacher's doing. I don't know that he does or doesn't, but he may not agree with everything his preacher's doing, but he understands headship and authority. And that's why when you're in the saddle, God will give you somebody just like you. Shame on anybody try to pull him away from his man of God. I don't care who you are. Shame on you. Unless you want to come to Generetta. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding, brother. I'm like Brother Buxton. I do at least hear come preach. Hmm. No, I'm trying to invite him for me. You got to fly eight hours. You ain't got and go to crazy nuts. He don't come either place. <laughs> we must be both pitiful. But see, if you ever start measuring giants. But Caleb said, hey, boys. This is about promise. God said, you can have it. And he had this revelation that I wish everybody here tonight would have eaten. If we can just get God happy with what we're doing. He said he'll give us land. I'm 
telling you there's unprecedented revival and increase represented in this house today. There's prophecies, Brother Bertram, still laying dormant for men like Verbal Bean. And they're ready to come to pass. And Pentecost has never been closer than where we are right now. I'm going to tell you what we really need to do, and you're not going to like this. We need to kick Instagram out the door. We need to take Facebook out of our house. And we need to get us focused on making God happy. As you talk about anointing, I know not everybody's going to rise to the challenge. I know not everybody's going to answer the call. There's going to be a lot that go back to the wilderness and say the giant's just too big. The walls are just too tall. But you listen to me, there's a spirit of Caleb on you, Brother Helder. And Pueblo can possess the land, I'm telling you. You don't need to figure out how to win Pueblo. You just keep making God happy. I feel it flowing right now. You are to close your eyes and receive it if you want it. There's a clarion call for some Caleb's tonight. I was in here most all day praying and I could feel it. I could feel it. I could feel it. Are there any Caleb's in the camp? Are there any Caleb's in the camp? Are there any willing vessels in the house? I'm going to tell you there's people here. You're counting the cost. Your soul is more important than your pretty boy lifestyle. There's some young ladies here count the cost. The promise is more than you can imagine. Come on, young preacher. Come on, pastor, son. Come on, pastor's daughter. Generation saint, come on, new convert. We can possess the land. Come on, 
Caleb. Caleb, the kingdom's looking for you. Caleb, the kingdom's looking for you.
you young ministers are to find another young minister and join up with me. You are to consecrate together. You are to consecrate together. I'm going to be a Caleb. I'm going to be a Caleb. I'm going to be a Caleb. I'm going to inherit my Where you at? Caleb. Caleb, where are you, son? Caleb, where are you, girl? Yeah, no, 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 no